Hey Bing, it's Hello. such a lovely hot day. Should we see if we can put the Sinclair C5 into a boat and set it on the reservoir? Uh, we could. Or, how about we go up to Birmingham and go to the UK Games Expo? It's the Expo? Yes. I need to prepare my game! <laughs> Camera. That's alright, I'm used to it, it's fine. Another Lloyd! What up? Hi guys! Is it time to do another impromptu interview? Another one? Another one? Oh, oh, hang on a second. Uh, Alright, I'm ready. Uh, howdy, howdy. Yeah, please, don't hold with the okay. Hi, I'm Lloyd Janice, I'm from the Apple Store as well. Nice to meet you all, and I'm here with Becky Rose. Becky Rose, how's it going? Pretty good, thank you. Now, Lloyd, do you have your Amazing World's Best channel yet? I don't have my Amazing World's channel yet. Yet. But I do have some artwork already commissioned for it, so you should watch out for that, it's coming out soon. You know, for all you poor people that have to queue for these things, the, the shutters are still shut. So. Oh, we do have to queue. Yeah. So we avoided the queue by going to the pub. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And now we're going to go in. So this is probably the last thing you'll hear me say because it's going to be bloody loud in there. So let's go. So just in case you come to a convention without a trilby, you can buy a steampunk one. So if that wasn't enough dice, we have more dice. Okay, we have a little bargain here, which is a dwarven throne. Do you like one of our leaflets? It just tells you a bit more about us. Just selling things that do like airsoft and LARP. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see the, the LARP stuff. A big element of the, of the game is deal or deceive, and it's based on the, the prisoner's dilemma. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> when are we next having sex after that now, babe? <laughs> for me, who just felt D100 wasn't quite enough. All three things for signing up for mailing this. Seems to be a thing of this expo. You give away your email address you can uh, get loads of free stuff. So what I would recommend for the expo is create an email account that you can throw away at the end if you didn't win anything. What are you pimping today? Uh, we're pimping, uh, we're not pimping anything. We're selling fantasy indie RPGs, uh, mostly spell books or uh, sandbox fantasy games, some zines. This is uh, Magic, the famous Magic Academy I can't say the name of, where everybody's drunk based on Eastern mysticism and mystery cults. So it's an alcoholic version of Magic the Getting Together in? No, the, the, the series, series of novel about the Magic Wizard School. Um, oh, oh. Like the source name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Harry Potter's about. Yeah, but yeah, pretty much. Or Henry but Potter's about. Yeah, Henry Potter's, Potter's about. That, that, that was it. Hi there. So, uh, you're pimping dungeons? Absolutely. If you can remember back to the 1980s when we were kids, the game Hero Quest was absolutely fantastic. I do remember it. It drew, drew me into the uh, game itself and, in fact, the whole role playing war games. Uh, event that we've got here today so uh, I've got that one game to uh, uh, thank for all of this and yeah I just wanted to bring this back to everyone. So, I think it's going to take a fair few of these starter sets though to actually build the Hero Quest board isn't it? Um, <laughs> yes I think the Hero Quest board was upwards of about two maybe 300 uh, individual sections or mm. uh, almost about 200 um, individual four so, sections. What, what are we making these of? It feels quite heavy so is that a plaster? Oh yeah that, that is um, a, a type of hard plaster. So dental plaster? Uh, it's um, alpha gypsum, I don't know whether they're the same, I've heard of okay. dental plaster as well but that's um, yeah, old ultra ultra tough. Mm -hmm. um, you, you probably couldn't snap one of the longer uh, bits in two if it was... Uh, mm. Not that I'd want to try, just in case. Well, no. <laughs>
No, it would take a, a, a drop or something in a gaming bag. So these uh, look uh, like resin? Yep, they're all resin pieces. So yeah, we wanted a bit more detail. I think the plaster works well with the stonework, mm. um, just because it's rough stonework. So um, yeah. for a bit more detail, what we want with the wood effects mm -hmm. on the uh, furniture okay. there. Then, so yeah, these are uh, gravity pouring these? That doesn't look... Uh, no, oh, no, 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 that looks injection. vacuum forms. Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry, vacuum cast. Yeah. Uh, these are gravity forms. Yeah, yeah. Stone. It would be, yeah. So because again, if you do get imperfections in there, you get imperfections in stone, so I thought... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's well, that's, that's fine. That's so how much... So is this this here, is this one starter set? Uh, yes, these are both starter sets. This has a couple of extra bits in, so there's two okay. tombs, but right. we only have so one in the starter set. This, this is a starter set. What, is, do, exactly. what does the starter set cost? That's £80. £80. Pounds. starter set, yeah. Okay. So um, when... I mean, I don't know how many other dungeon places are around here, but I've seen resin dungeon pieces. You get a 4x4 four four room, maybe, and that's upwards of almost 10 or 12 pounds. So, yeah, yeah, you can get something like this for over 100 pounds. So, fantastic uh, value for money, I think. So this is something called Seize the Bean. Hi there, what are you selling us today? Uh, Seize the Bean, it's a game about putting your job as barista and building up uh, your own coffee in Berlin. Ah, coffee shop. Now, anyone who works as a barista, take note. Costa, your coffee sucks. Grind the fucking beans just before you make the coffee, not once a fucking week. Sorry, front over. So, uh, a game about being a barista. Okay, so what do we have to do? So, it's based in Berlin. You have customers from different districts in Berlin. And you can go for having high quality and earning money by debt, or you go for lower quality and have lots of customers. Or so lower quality coffee like, oh, I don't know, Costa. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, it's basically a deck builder. You get, you take customers from the street, you attract them from the street, you have a customer deck, you build a supply deck, where you decide which kind of quality okay. you want to run for. Yeah, cool. And Victor reports for And how much is this game? Um, we are currently uh, developing this game. We intend to okay. have it on Kickstarter by the end of the year. So we've got. Uh, oh, I, I spot a reference to Firefly. Um, ah, boom. Bannery things. Ah, Hodor! Hodor! <laughs> Poor Hodor! <laughs> yes, I see. I, 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 Oh, hold on. <laughs> Realm Master! Uh, you can tell this has got serious with both put glasses on. Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're both very good. The war between me and Ronnie has raged on, and I think it's about to cancel. I have him down to two health. I'm hitting for five. But I only have three. I don't. When you kill a player, you can ransack their corpse and take ah. their stuff. Bad and Mercer, two life for coin, and I attack with two swords. Plus one, three. So, three damage. I have fallen... Vengeance! My noble quest to vanquish my foes is at an end. I would like... It's got potential, that game. Yeah, good fun. And that's on Kickstarter now. And how much is it? £39. £39. £29. £29. £29. Pounds. 29. Pounds. 29. Pounds. 29. So it's not Perfectly bad. reasonable. Okay, so played some Citadels with Ronnie and Jason. And now they're setting up for the Cthulhu Masters. So, Jason's one of the GMs in the Masters this year. Ronnie's off to the trade hall. I am going to be playing in the Cthulhu Masters. So. This is a role-playing tournament based on Call of Cthulhu 7th edition. It can be any of the, the variants from the... Uh, from, from, there's loads of versions of Call of Cthulhu now, so... Uh, and it's basically a tournament, so... The, the first game we, uh, we either get through, by being nominated by all the players as the player to go through. Um, and then there's a final, which I don't expect to be in. So, this is the Cthulhu Masters run.
less 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 a wedding table, <laughs> and uh, we have some kind of uh, Hawaiian party going on over there. <laughs> right, show him the sign to show him how to my creepy idea like that. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, so uh, yeah. how should we do this? Oh, God. Yeah. It's good, because... Uh, That's why the rules are not bad. These are the GMs that will be torturing us today. Alright, good. So can you now, now could you look like the food GM? Being scary, you know. Cheeks. 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 Che
there more? Yes, yes there, there is, is more. more. <laughs> I have found more. There's another thing hidden Don't in the lid. I'm trying not to. <laughs> there we go. This feels particularly fragile, I have to say. Oh, wow. Caesar. Yu-Gi-Oh stand here. Lots of people stood around playing that. And uh, fire exits. Okay. Oh no, that's Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know. Then what was that? Pocket Mars. Mars? Pocket Mars. Pocket Mars, apparently. Pocket Mars Rather fewer people playing Yu-Gi-Oh than Munchkin Glue. So, have you played Sounds Coup? like a crossover. Coup? Have you played Coup? I have a friend called Coup. I wouldn't say I've played her. Uh, I've kind of got the front desk game. Whoa! Thank you. Very self-important people coming through. They've never met a YouTuber before. <laughs> so day two point five, Saturday. I'm really, really tired after drive home last night with some horrendous rain and dark and I was exhausted from the Masters game. And uh, so this morning I'm running Corporation. Hey babe. You're on camera. Good morning. So what are you up to today? I'm in one of Sean Connor's games, which is a rare opportunity because his games are always so full, all the time. Yeah. And since you were in his game last night, I was like, I want to be in his game too. <laughs> so he's running like a frontier old school fantasy thing at 10 o'clock, and then we're both doing Star Wars that I'm running in the afternoon. Yes. So I'm doing a, a light-hearted corporation game, which is, to be honest, I'm really glad because uh, I thought, you know, after the Masters, it, you know, which is a bit intense, I might want something a little more sort of light-hearted. So corporation it is. There are so many rooms full of games where you just sort of turn up and um, play your games. I, I filmed some of them earlier in the video, but the um, thing is, half the time the doors are like, different times of day and different rooms are open. I don't quite uh, understand the logic of it. So at the moment I can't get into the room I'm playing in, and I've left my glasses in the car, so I'm doing this game blind. Is there a camera? <laughs> yeah, it's a... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm getting down as well, we're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to so, like, yes, I'm a YouTuber too, this is my partner, only, only my channel. <laughs> What's your name? Becky Rose. Becky, nice to meet you, Becky. Nice to meet you. Hey. Hey. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Favourite YouTubers! Favourite! You hear that? Wow. You, are, you are very good. We do like to watch a lot of yes. videos. Well, you're, you're like my morning view. Favorite. You know, when I wake up and I can't see yet. <laughs> and that, it's, it's like, look, I should have been sit down with you. That's incredibly kind of you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> yeah! Well, have a great day! We shoot me. Yeah, we need to go and you know, feel free to mention my, ch my shit channel. Oh, what's your channel's name? It's Pair of Geeks. Pair of Geeks. Right, right. Okay. It's, right. all, it's all about improving your game. Convention brain, so who knows. But, yeah. mm, you know, playing better uh, board games or role-playing games and stuff. <laughs> it's good content. And now I'm a world champion role-player. Well, <laughs> the advice is good. Are you? I won the Masters yesterday. Yeah, the Masters? Mm, yeah. yeah. Right, you see, so, you know, this, is, this is raw role-playing talent right here, and you need to make your viewers aware so that I get loads Here's of fucking subscribers. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. This is my crew of, of corporation agents who've just uh, finished uh, the, the, the session Meet You in France. You can keep these character sheets, by the way, if, if you want to uh, a thing for it. So this is the crew. They, they did successfully capture all the horses uh, right up until the, the twist of the ending. So uh, I hope you guys had a, a great time, and thank you all for playing. And, uh, thank you. So... Uh, Food court time, and the food court here is delicious. I think that is the consensus, the group consensus of uh, a thumbs up to the food court. 
And so this afternoon I'm going into The Lost Jedi, a Star Wars game. I've not actually played the, any of the Star Wars systems yet, so uh, it's going to be interesting. And of course it's being run by this special person. So just finished Star Wars, I played the droid K6 dash non D something K6 basically. And um this way, I think. Um and uh yes, I was a slightly insane droid. Like when the party asked me to be quiet, I rolled a grenade into the room and shushed it. You know, that kind of insane. So uh, it was good fun, a really good laugh. I was cr I cried myself and, um from laughter several times, so it was a good laugh. Just and I'm heading over to <laughs> yes. it was a it was a really fun game. So uh, we're just heading over to the NEC now to Hall Three, apparently, uh, where we've got some friends playing board games. So we could uh, head over there, meet up, and play some board games before we head home. So European Championships for uh, fantasy flight game stuff, uh, the Pokemon thing, and many, many more things besides. Let's go have a look. Netrunners played here. We've got uh, whatever that is. I think that's the X-Wing sign-up side event registration. So, uh, so we've got a Game of Thrones card game going on uh, here, a tournament for that. Quite a few tables for it. Uh, there's a Star Wars Destiny tables. Quite a few of those. What we got down here, we have Star Wars the card game, which I've never heard of. It's mostly empty at the moment though, we are quite late in the day. So I don't know what games are being played here, but we've got quite a lot of scenery out. Uh, it's not quite up to my usual standard, but there's a fair few tables. Uh, so we could have a moon. I know what this is. This is the man hall. So as you look around, basically I've seen so far three women. Does that include you? No, it's not including me. I've just I've counted three, four women, but one of them appears to be staff on the prize wall. Uh, oh, there's another one over there, that's five. Yeah, I counted them. Just saw a guy. Looks like an overweight version of Howard from the Big Bang Theory. He didn't touch me up or make inappropriate comments. So last night on the way home, we hit some roadkill. So um, we think, well, there is some damage to the car. I'm just about to go out and have a look at it and see if our expo is over a day before the end. I've just got up, it's way early. Uh, that's not too bad. Right, I'm no mechanic and I don't really know anything about the magic box underneath the unicorn thing. Where all the pixies are. But the bit that's hanging off, that looks like a safety guard. I'm just going to have a look at the rest, if there's anything else under there. So this is the thing I just took off the car. That's just a shield oil there. Um, it's broken. This side is where we hit the roadkill. Now that is attached to this bit, which now has this shear in it from the side of the engine and something in the engine has lost a ball bearing. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's from because the ball bearing's from the magic box, that's the limit of my mechanical ability. I spoke to my breakdown people in the night and they said because I limped it home, I'd start at home and that cost me £108 to come out. And good news, so the, what I thought was a ball bearing turned out to be with a plastic had curled up and formed a ball where it sheared through, so we are on. I'm going to go get showered and ready and then make a very tired trip up because it was an early start fixing that. So onwards, trying not to hit anything on the way. So 
so it's day four. I've been up since first light fixing this car and I'm very, very tired. But um, I did fix the car, we got here, but I don't know much about cars. So I've had a message from my brother that says I've got to check the belts and to be honest, I didn't even know cars had trousers. I think so. <laughs> Lloyd is dissing the Cthulhu Masters. I'm not dissing the Cthulhu Masters. I think they're a fantastic, beautifully well-organised organisation who've been working at Expo for way longer than anyone should give them credit for. It takes a lot of effort to get as far and as good as they've gotten. Games of the Man is just better, that's all. I'm just, I'm just saying, Games of the Man is just better. We're just better, Cthulhu Masters. In two years' time, I'm gonna be doing what you're doing, I'm having all your players, I'm gonna be doing it better than you. I'm just saying, your days are numbered, y'all better watch out. So Lloyd's running Games on Demand, so this is every two hour slots? Every two hour slots, every two, two hours. Two hour slots, taking up to 30 players, yeah? Up to 30 players, hopefully up to 30 players. Not in one game. Not in one game, got, of course. You've got loads of GMs, right? Yeah, there will be, we have four GMs, each one of them running different types of games. You turn up, you pick a game you wanna play, and we go out. And he's got the Firefly stuff with him. He's running. Firefly you know, I've had things. so much love for Firefly recently. I'm so surprised. It's like, it's a really good game, but I didn't think. I mean, it was, I knew it was popular, but I'm surprised not a lot of people are running it. So, people are all about games of the man trying out. I'll definitely bring it next year. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Anyway, you should probably turn that off now because I feel really awkward and self conscious. Why? Because I'm not very good at camera. I think what we need to do then is zoom in on you. Absolutely. Well, why are you zooming in my face? Oh God, my beard is so bad. So Jason's just uh, signing on as a GM, so you have to come to this room and be, oh, sorry, oh, in someone's way. So you have to uh, come in here and sign on to, to uh, and that all updates the app so that players know that the game is boarding now. They sort of do it like a sort of airplane terminology. Um, and then we're off to play Shadows of Estoran, is it? Mm -hmm. No, we're playing Hollow Earth. We're playing Hollow Earth in Lancaster Suite, which Jason is convinced is where all the top GMs go to Lancaster. And he's saying this because I was put in York, and he says, I, oh, oh, I should be really privileged because I, I've got a ground floor slot on my first time. And, you know, there's a pecking order, you know, the top GMs go to Lancaster. York's the, the second tier. Just did Hollow Earth, and there were Yetis and Nazis, and we found Shangri La. Um, we were given the choice to stay in Shangri La or to return back to the world, but if we returned back to the world, we would not remember any of it. My character was a reporter who'd written everything down, so she left, but of course, she didn't believe anything she'd written down and ended up publishing her story and it ended up in the fiction section. So, we're buying Colt Express, it's a board game. So, uh, we're, we're bargain hunting now here on the last day, just a few minutes to go. Okay, how's the expo been for you? It's been amazing. Thanks. Sold loads of stuff. Yes, more, more than I anticipated it from the radio. I almost, I almost uh, thought I was going to run out of stock. It's yeah? been that good. Really? So, yeah. Good year for it? Yeah, definitely. So where do you put what's your store? Uh, the store is Lazy Juggler. It's a little uh, better Lazy there, I forgot to bring the stuff Lazy Juggler, so yes, and they are purveyors of Cult Express. Yes, the best, one of the best games around. Uh, PayPal okay. will send you an email or text. You, with this game you also win a free flyer. Oh, oh fantastic, we, we feel so privileged. Thanks. This is something I haven't seen before. Three-way chess. Yeah. So how does that work? Well, it, it just uh, you just play as usual as a regular chess, but you have two opponents, more options, more, more spaces and places to go. So it's much more interesting and complicated. So you know it. Sure. That's gonna blow your brains. And I'm, I bet you haven't seen this thing. That's uh, the best party game ever made. Alco Alcoholi. Alcoholi. It's not only about drinking, but it's uh, about many activities. You have to uh, dance, sing, stream, take a body shots, kiss shots, swapping t-shirts, swapping trousers, everything. It's uh, so much of a fun. And that's what. What's this to do? That's with our it? award from last year. We won best board game in Bulgarian Game Awards 2016. It is in fact back again, they have the double-decker bus in here, Games Bus. And uh, apparently a space marine of some kind. And the problem
happens when you've been on the scene for a few years, it's hard to walk around without bumping into people you know and ending up in conversations. I'm like, I've got limited time to see the train hall. I want to see everything. Things. People dressed as whatever that is. Pirates or something. So, ooh, shiny book covers. So, oh, so you're an artist? Yes, This is all your stuff, yeah? So, uh, hi, I'm Becky Rose from Pair of Geeks. Hello. Um, so, how's your expo been? Sorry? How's your expo been? Yeah, fantastic. It's great. Yeah? So, lots of, great. lots of commissions and things? Yeah, lots of commissions, good contacts, good talks. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. So, this is your stuff, yeah? yeah? Oh, I'm digging her. Hell yeah, she means business. It's from the game Nine Worlds over there. Game of Nine Worlds, where's it? Oh, right, right over there. So, you're the artist for that. That's cool. So, what was your name? Andre Schneider. Bert, who? Andre Schneider. Andre Schneider. Andre Schneider. So I know some people know all the fantasy artists and be going, you didn't know who Andre Schneider was? Is, is yeah. that going to be a thing? Um, <laughs> I'm just a <laughs> gonna... illustrator uh, <laughs> doing board games. <laughs> so when I put this up on YouTube and people say, you met Andre Schneider and you had no idea who it was, am I, I going to look an idiot? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> OK. <laughs> we have found a candle made of unicorn tears. Scenery! Looks like alien scenery. But this is what caught my eye. It's like this kind of... Reminds me years ago when I played EverQuest. There was this, this, this uh, region in Quenos, I think it was, uh, where there's Avax live. Or Avax or Aviax? Birdmen, anyway. Um, kind of reminds me of those huts. So uh, this is Antares, which reminds me of Master of Orion. So, uh, so sad that never came back. Oh, look, I should have shorts. So uh, some kind of World War II thing going on here. This looks like a centerpiece. This should be on my gaming table. And here's a different kind of centerpiece entirely. A laser cut power pylon. So what have we got going on here? Zombie apocalypse, maybe? What's going on? Or is it something? It looks like it's um, a shootout. Yeah. And oh look, we've got cars having sex. I think it's a Walking Dead. Oh yeah, look, look, Walking Dead. All out war. And here we've got some kind of high fantasy ice scene going on. So, this one looks very different. What is it you're doing here? Uh, we're promoting our app, Sirenscape. It's an app for uh, to enhance the uh, overall atmosphere at the gaming table with the uh, sounds and music. So is this volumes? And uh, yeah, actually um, those are um, different sound sets that uh, each cover a different mood, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, this enhanced forest or a battle or something. Okay. And then you have like a sequence of, of sound effects starting okay. uh, and so. changing in volume to just enhance the scene. Plus, you can add some extra sound effects on, the si on this side of the, of the player, like force missiles firing off. Or maybe a little fire spell. And the all for infamous Wilhelm scream. Oh, the Wilhelm scream. Has to be in here. <laughs> I have found something. A Star Wars carcassonne. Sadly, this is the response I got when I suggested it for our gaming table. It means we'll never get to play it. So, um, moving on. Oh, this guy looks vicious. <laughs> how you doing? How's your expo been? I've been hunting hobbits. Hobbits? How, how many have you found? Now, look, four. four. Now look, my boyfriend is quite short. Please don't eat him. Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> what about his legs? Can I have his legs? Up there for me to eat. Ah. <laughs>
was at least one hurt start setup. So there's three at once. Right there. So, how's your convention going? Yes, very well, very, very well. Yeah. And so, what are you vending today? Um, at the moment, we are doing our Hearst Arts uh, dungeon sets. Um, we make them all ourselves. We mm -hmm. hand paint them, um, cast them all ourselves. Okay, so you sell them painted. What do you make them from? Is it dental plaster? No, it's actually from a resin infused. Uh, Plaster, so it's, okay, uh, so part, part, resin, part, part resin, part plaster. Part plaster. Yep. So okay. Part wearing. And with this guy, so what's your name? John. Hello, Charlie. So, uh, how's your expert been? It's been pretty good, but unfortunately I'm closing down, so... Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, I did see the, the yeah. signs up, so... It's been busy, it's been good. No. So, you're a game store, right? Yeah, I used so to be a retail store. So, bricks and mortar store? I used to be, I'm not now. Okay, so what, what's, what's, your, what's what about the decision to close down? Finance. Yeah. Too, many, too many online retailers, too much Kickstarter. They're probably the key elements. Yeah. So, that's why I wanted to talk to this guy, you see. The, the face of the games industry is changing. I don't think it's killing the industry but it's making it harder for retailers yeah it's, it's definitely changed it it's more direct now yeah it's a lot more yeah. i mean I, as, a, as a gamer myself uh, i pick up games off kickstarter and you realize you're missing out everybody in the middle yes yeah is, i mean I, there are actually games i've seen that were kickstarters that they haven't bought because they haven't got all the kickstarter extras yeah. Uh, so it's kind of changing the mentality as well, I think. There's a bit of that, yes. Mm. Yes, I think so. That's the way it goes. So, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope your future endeavours go well for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Right. So here we've got a price drop option. So uh, everything here is currently £5.50. There's all sorts of things. Well, she didn't see anything I was particularly interested in on that one, uh, which is a shame because, you know, 550 is a good price. Oh, look at this beauty. Well, lots of nice ship models here. Hi there, how are you? I'm tired. <laughs> it's been a long expo, yeah? Oh, yeah? So how's your expo been? Good. Uh, we always enjoy it. Even if we don't sell a great deal, it doesn't really matter. It's the best show we come to. Um, how much have you sold this year? Oh, quite a bit, yeah. We've yeah? Been it's, right. been, it's been alright. <laughs> so what are these? So these are for RPGing, are they? Are they or? The MDF kits that we make uh, for various games. Uh, we go through most genres, fantasy. We've only brought a very small selection. It's fantasy, we've got World War II style. Okay, so everything's explorable, is it? Can, oh, yeah, you, can yeah, you take yeah. lids off here? Well, can yeah. I just, uh, there we go. And the main hull as well. Oh, that is nice. Uh, so all our kits, Dark Ops is the, is the company, all our kits you can get into. So the frigate, this is Sea Wolf. Oh, oh, do, I don't have £75, do I? I would be in so much trouble if I bought that. I have, I have nowhere to put it. You'd be, ah, but think of the trouble you'd be in if you didn't buy it. <laughs> you know? Okay, remember Becky, Dark Ops go UK. That's, that's what you've got to get permission to buy. Oh, we're from Geek and we do dining and gaming tables, and this is the one of the top range. It's called Henry. It's got drawers to keep your apartments here, keep your uh, sound system, LED lights, uh, and different features. So when you use it as a dining table, you use the slats to cover your game, which you can pause. And when you're not using it as a dining table, you can use it for gaming. So it's got padded surface for your cards to pick up easily. Uh, you can slide it from one game to another. So you're not limited with uh, with one only game. You can have two different setups. So this is called TM Desk. Game Master. You can just oh, okay. hide it, unlock it, and it goes away. So nice. Basically, that's the Henry game table. And there's one feature that I want to just look at. It's remote control. We've got to, of course, leave it on purple. He's found a big game. Yes. He's very happy. How's your expo going? Oh, brilliantly. Yeah. We are, you know, in, on those hot products, we are almost sold out. So, um, 
got an hour to go. It doesn't look almost sold out, though. Uh, actually, this is, yeah, this is almost sold out. We, we started from this, run out, then refilled from this. Okay, so tell us about this game. Yeah, actually, this is the setup oh. already done. So, uh, actually, what's going on? You make a beer yeah. just on your own, based on your board. Based on this component's drafting, right? So you have something here, schedule work here, and make your recipe. And then you are going to the market and just uh, trying to fulfill some goals to make some points. But this is not the, the, the most awesome stuff here, because first of all, you need to participate in this uh, market by bidding the tokens, and then you can go for the points, right? And then from time to time, there's also some competition, like open competition. You can, you can declare your beer to this competition, like every player, and then you can just be reviewed by this guy based on his taste. So, got a few thousand viewers, might want to know how much? 31. 31. 30, 31 pounds. 31 pounds, okay. So that's not bad at all, you know. And how much is it for us? <laughs> Okay, need to project yeah, to be heard no on. So no, I've only got a few thousand people, don't be nervous. Yeah, that's alright. So, how are you doing? So, my name's Scott from RPG Factory. So, what we do is 3D print various different items. So, in this case, if you can see these, these are dungeon kits. So, they are snap and click dungeon kits. I am known for my dungeons. Brilliant. Um, and the big problem I have with Dwarven Forge and that sort of modular tile system is that I like to put big setups out. Um, and I had seen this online before. Now I haven't invested in it because I have 14 dungeons. Collectors. <laughs> uh, and when you get to 14 dungeons, you there think, are. You need a whole new house. <laughs> no, no, more shelves. In. Oh, more shelves. More shelves. The, the big problem I have with, with the Dwarven Forge stuff is, or that style of modular dungeon. You should just can't put it out in normal play. Yep. It takes too long. Can do. So this takes us uh, approximately uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the material is, uh, if you get a little technical, polylactic acid, PLA. So it's a bio-friendly material. Okay, cool. Now what, what I have noticed though picking this up is it does feel like it wants to come apart on me. It shouldn't do. It's very, it feels wobbly. On the edges, there are no connections. But that's so you can actually literally twist it like that. So, so like we were saying, that, rough with it there. And that so you is... can actually twist it like that. So it does make a nice cracking sound as if it's broken, but it's yeah. not. That's just the plastic on plastic because it's quite tough. Right. Do you have a kind of uh, like a sort of starter set type box or we something do. like that? Yeah. Okay. So, we have, we have so how much is in the, a set? So you can see there, small dungeon, twenty four ninety nine. Okay, that's pathetic. Let's move on. Medium dungeon, thirty four ninety nine. Not big enough. Large dungeon, forty four ninety nine. Now we haven't got any large dungeons here because we have sold out. But I can show you a medium dungeon, for example. That's the kit that you get in it. Snap links that we've designed ourselves. The actual pieces themselves, and some doors. I love the doors. Just put a hand behind Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Focus. There we go. That, just do a location. A location, yeah. yeah. But nothing says wow to players like laying out the whole dungeon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, of course, the problem then is where do they put the character sheets? <laughs> well, interesting you should say that. Oh! Next week, we release our new chip gaming system. We 3D print chips. So these are NFC chips, near field communication. And if you've got an Android phone, what you do, you put this, you scan it, it comes up, and on our website here, it's stored 100 XP. 100 XP is on this token. Okay. Now you can do more with it. You can set a trap token, a story token, or a character token, or a bag token. So you can imagine, for example, 599, and what we will do, we will send you one of these units with an NFC chip in it. So your players, your characters, when, you, when they're actually playing with their Android phone, they can wave over the dungeon, and then all of a sudden, what you see is a trap come up. Oh, saw this. Has it got the logo, we endanger species? No, it's not painted. It's some kind of alien predator game. Xenomorphs, predators, and presumably colonial marines. What's the combat mechanic? So, um, kind of, to me, from the surface, looks like Space Hulk, but with the actual license it was imitating. 
So that took about 15 minutes. Exactly oh, what did you buy? New dice set, which is very nice looking. Because some look okay. And I got um, an all rolled up Cthulhu themed bag where you can put pencils, dice, and whatever, which I've kind of wanted for some time. Yeah. Oh my god, they have a beer, they have a Shaz Vestrum beer. Oh my god. Dark Saison. So it's a dark beer. Saison. So it's like a French. Dry tasting one, but it's dark. We were just walking past and dismissing the Warhammer 40k stand that has the world's smallest wargaming tables. I couldn't help but notice. There's a beholder! Hello. So, this is our big damn crate. This is designed to hold Firefly and every expansion that's currently out. It's a pretty amazing box. So this will give you an idea of the scale of it right here. This is just the lid to the box. This is made from a six millimeter birch plywood. Really nice engraving on the top. This engraving alone takes 30 minutes for the laser to put this on the lid. And uh, all together, this is about a, a two and a half to three hour laser cutting job to produce one of them. But this holds everything for Firefly, even to the latest crime and punishment expansion. So it's really amazing. You've got acrylic lids for the token trays, felt pads for the bottom. And the best thing about this, it's not just designed to hold everything into one box, but it enhances the gameplay. It makes the gameplay so much more fun. So all of these card trays are designed for you to draw and discard the cards into the trays themselves. So you don't have to have multiple stacks all over the table. So it really organizes the gameplay. And if you've played Firefly before, you know it's a monster of a game that takes up sometimes yeah. two tables worth, right? <laughs> With this organizer, you can actually stand the box up on its edge and play out of the box. So you don't even really have to get it all set up all over the table. So it's really amazing. It's uh, For people that play Firefly a lot, uh, it, it definitely revolutionizes the game. <laughs> it does, but it also unfortunately does have a bit of a revolutionary effect on the bank account. Right, yes, let's, that's Let's true, be that's honest true. about that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's, it's, it's it is by far, I think, I, I'm guessing this is your most expensive product, it is, is it? It yeah. is, and it's not for probably the casual Firefly player. You know, you're going to want to play <laughs> no, the game, you know, <laughs> as often as you can when you own this nice piece of work. Um, mm. When we put it out, we weren't sure if something of this price point would be popular, so we kind of, it was kind of a test, but um, it's done very, very well. In fact, we have a version that we assemble and stain and lacquer ourselves, and we only made 200 of them. They came with their own brass engraved plaques with your number, one out of 200, and those sold for 300 USD a piece, and we're almost done with the whole run of 200 of those. So um, they've been very, very popular, and so it's been pretty amazing. So yeah, it's a great, great, great kit. So for big Firefly fans, definitely check it there out. There is just two questions there. Yeah. I know it's going to be a bad answer to one of them, but what about future expansions? <laughs> so, Crime and Punishment was a future expansion. We hadn't planned for it, but we made a slight modification, we made it work, and we offered a very inexpensive upgrade path to anybody who had already bought it. I think it was like five US dollars. You could get the little upgrade tray to make Crime and Punishment work. So, we always try to do our best to handle uh, you know, any future upgrades, but obviously there's no guarantee because we don't know what they're going to do. But, what fine. about big money? Oh, the, the uh, 50s, I believe, right? Those are a little bit problematic because they're so large. They did say they were a little bit made just for kind of uh, not really official use, but more just for fun. So it's not something that easily fits into this box, but I think people might be able to lay them on top or something and get them to fit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you do have lots of other games too? Yeah. And how has your expo gone? It's been great. It's been amazing. My first time here personally at UK Games Expo, and it's been a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. Hello. What are, you, what are you trying to flog me today? I'm trying to flog you. It's the beautiful game that is Untold Adventures Awaits. Uh, it is a role-playing story game, uh, storytelling game rather. Sorry, it's Sunday. It's really late. Uh, that's powered by Rory Story Cubes. Uh, so we're the Creativity Hub. We are the makers of Rory Story Cubes. And uh, we are shilling this on Kickstarter till Thursday, the 8th of June. And uh, yes, it's very lovely. You should try it out. 
<laughs> okay. What the hell is a Rory Story Cube? Is that okay. this thing here? These are these things here. So uh, they originally came out in 2008. Uh, the first set was the base set, and there are nine cubes, each with six faces, because that's how cubes work, and 54 different icons that will allow you to tell stories. So normally, you just roll them all out, and you tell a story using all nine of the cubes. Untold gives you a guideline and a framework that allows you to experience adventure in a world of your own creation. So think of your favorite TV shows, your favorite books, your favorite movies, or a world that you make up yourself, and boom, you are suddenly in it, and you will create amazing adventures where you are the heroes. So just a couple of minutes to go in the trade hall, I have my loot. The bag just ripped. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and, well, hopefully it survived that. So, um, yes, I bought Scythe with the expansion. Uh, I just walked up to Trace Down a few minutes ago. I've been asking a few minutes ago. So, you know, I've been asking around, trying to get the price down to 50 quid. Nobody would do it for 50 quid. I waited for a few minutes ago. But if I buy it with the expansion, would you do it for a load of money off? And I got a load of money off, and I won't tell you how much. So, uh, success. It was more than a fiver. So somebody from Shut Up and Sit Down just recognised me and said hello. And I quivered so much like a little girl, I think they're now frightened of me and will never say hi again. So it's 20 to 5. No, 40 to 5. It's half four-ish. And there's just one game slot left. The, um... What do they call it? Games on demand. So these are two hour slot games. And Lloyd, who must have GM'd I don't know how many games this weekend, is doing games every two hours for all three days. Um, the poor sod. There are no more tickets being sold. They've closed the thing where, so you know, you can't buy, can't buy more tickets. But I just went in and had a little word with him and he's agreed to run it anyway. It's a grouper as Lloyd. So uh, we're going to pop over there shortly. Um, just some sort of salad. A drink to cool off from carrying that bloody heavy scythe box back to the car. So, Firefly. So we're all done, we're finished. We just we played our last game, which was Firefly with Lloyd Gann. And how the hell that man still has energy to talk after doing that every two hours for three days straight? No idea. I couldn't do it. So, if he had lots of energy to bring to the table, which is cool. To be honest, I think he was the most energetic person there. We're all quite tired at the end of. Uh, three days of, of gaming, so um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a good introduction to Firefly as well. I've not played the system before. It's a Cortex system. Apparently there's a new version of the system going to be coming out, and I don't know if they can do it with Firefly or on a different theme. But, no, I um, don't. It, it's an interesting approach because the GM doesn't choose a difficulty number, they choose difficulty dice to use. And there's various mechanics around that, so then the GM rolls the dice and that sets the difficulty number, and that does kind of slow it up a little. Um, but, uh, and it kind of, I suppose in some ways it, it absolves the GM from having to make up difficulties. They get to influence it, but not decide. I don't know if me as a GM, if I would like to do that, but Firefly as a setting is called a rock And it was a good, it was a good game. Yeah. yeah. It was a good game. It wasn't my best character. Too tired. I wasn't Too a very tired. good captain. I, I, I wasn't a very good Zoe. I wasn't Zoe, I was a different character, Zoe but I was the playing second. the Zoe role. It was, yeah, Zoe, Zoe the second. Zoe, Zoe, Zoe the second. I, I agree. And can barely do words anymore, because I've been up since 6am fixing a car. Dribble, you. dribble, dribble. Love you. But we made it. We're just paying for a car parking ticket that we put somewhere. I don't know where. And then we're going home. Pizza. Undo.